Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're working on a 2014 Kia Forte. Um, customer complaint, stalling when coming to a stop. So I hooked the scanner up, no codes. Went and drove it. It took me a while to get it to duplicate it, but I finally got it down to where I can uh, <laughs> pretty much duplicate it anywhere. And what I was noticing is it sounded like the engine was pinging. Um, if you haven't heard that sound, it's kind of a higher pitch knocking sound and it's very rapid and that's normally detonation either the vehicle is running too lean it's burning some oil which is lowering the uh, the octane of the fuel it starts igniting that oil first or the timing's too far advanced but my scan data didn't show a lean running condition um, I went and data logged it while it was happening I got the vehicle to stall numerous times still no code set and data indicated that it wasn't running that lean um, <clears throat> was kind of kind of stumped so I checked fuel pressure just to make sure that I didn't have an issue and checked fuel quality everything looked fine there went and drove it again and I noticed something else in the scan data and that was the variable valve timing so I brought it back in the shop I was like, okay let me see if I can duplicate it in the shop and I was able to duplicate it in the shop and I'll show you what it does right now so this car has 58,000 miles on it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lightly power brake it. And it almost stalled there and took a second to catch up. Hold on one second and let me put the camera out by the engine. And as you can see, I got a bunch of scope leads hooked up, but if I unplug the oil control valve for the variable valve timing, which is right back there, the problem goes away. It no longer stalls and it doesn't rattle. But is that the problem? Is it the oil control valve or is it the timing gear here? Well, this whole system operates off of oil pressure. So maybe we should check the base oil condition, um, oil pressure, find out what the spec is, see if we're in that spec because if we have a problem with the oil pressure, that's gonna cause a problem with that entire system. So that's why I have all these leads up. I have a hose going underneath connected to the oil pressure sensor port. And I didn't have enough uh, trust in this gauge. To tr to, so I hooked up the WPS 500X, hooked that up to the Pico. Let's start it up and see how much oil pressure we have at idle. The spec is 14 pounds at 1,000 RPM. We're going to have to rev it up a little bit to make sure we have 14 pounds of pressure at 1,000 RPM. So zooming down right here, we only have eight and, a pound, eight and a half pounds, and that is not enough. Now the vehicle is full of oil. The oil is discolored. There is no lube sticker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the oil filter first and run it again and see what it looks like. And then I'm gonna flush it out. Then we're gonna change the oil filter a second time with um, new oil that time as well. And see if that makes an improvement, see if that takes care of our problem. Okay, I'm gonna start it up. I have the new filter installed. I didn't even top off the oil. Wait a second while well, it builds oil pressure. And already we have more oil pressure. We're off the screen from where we were. So we need to change our range. And we were at six pounds before and now we're at 12 and a half.
Okay, so now at 1,000 RPM, we have 20 PSI of oil pressure instead of the nine pounds we had before, and the rattle seems to be gone. So I'm gonna proceed and do an oil flush on this. I'll change that filter again, put new oil in it, do a final verification of oil pressure, and then go for a test drive, and make sure that all the symptoms are gone. So I have the flush chemical in there. I've just been letting it run for a little while. We're gonna drain that out, change the filter again, put some new oil in there, and then we're also gonna put this MOA additive. But now that it's been running with the new filter for a while, um, I did a, you know, the test with 1000 RPM and then what I'm sitting at at idle. It doesn't give you an idle spec in the service manual, it gives you just 1000 RPM. But we are about 10 PSI at idle and 17 at hot, um, testing it at 1000 RPM. What I want to show you is the filter that I'm going to put on, I'm just going to put a nap of silver. The filter I took off is this filter from the Chrysler dealership. So I'm going to put this other filter next to that. Look how much bigger the Napa filter is than what the Mopar dealership put on. Yeah, it had the right threads. It threaded right on there. Um, it probably fits multiple makes and models, but there's going to be a lot more filter media and a bigger filter like this than one like that. Plus, I don't know what the pressure relief st standards are in this guy. I do know that Kia has a service bulletin on the older vehicle saying that they recommend the factory only filters because of pressure relief issues. And that's probably the issue that we were having in this guy. I don't know if the pressure relief issues are better in this guy, but that's what I have in stock. That's what we're going to put on. Um, if the guy actually watches his oil change intervals and changes the oil on time, he shouldn't have an issue. Okay, we got the new oil in there. Um, we're sitting uh, around probably 11 and a half, 12 at idle. I'm gonna go ahead and set it about a thousand RPM in gear. I'm gonna hold it here for a second or two because uh, before, that's when it would happen. It would 10 to 15 seconds in gear, just lightly power braking it just over a thousand RPM, kind of fluttering between a thousand and 1500. It would start knocking and then stall. Um, but then again, we were less than 10 PSI at that RPM range um, before changing the oil and filter. But no more knocking. Um, if I let, let off the gas real fast, it doesn't stall. So I think we're gonna be good to go here. Now there is a reason that the oil filter got plugged up, whether that be from bearing material, slowly plugging up the filter, sludge from not changing the oil soon enough. Um, there could be underlying issues with the engine that cause that filter to plug up. So if the customer has this issue again and the next time a filter doesn't change it or the filter's plugged again, then there's probably something going on with the engine. Um, even with the factory filter, you know, you, you would probably only see marginally better than this filter when new. So other than putting an engine in it, you know, that's the only way that you're going to fix any other issue if there's issues with the bearings. I think that we're going to be okay doing just this repair and now the customer can pick it up, drive it for a while and let us know what happens. So if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.